Hello, I'm Malik Rosalo. I work in Data Clay, and now I will be talking a little about, about locality in Data Clay and the split that it's a kind of an entity iteration that we are, have been working on. So, first of all, a little bit of introduction of what is Data Clay and what problems does it solve. It's a distributed active object store. So, the focus on this active is that it stores objects in their native form, object-oriented objects. And the active capability allows you to execute code where the data is. Um, this, this allows a single data model to manage both the persistence of the model, uh, of the data, and the, uh, and the execution of methods in that data. Um, this this uh, exploits data locality, because you are you are, instead of moving data, you are executing the code where the data is. And technically, this is achieved by having a, the backends keep the object in memory, just as in the object. So for Python objects, you, the, the different backends that you have in the clay have the object instantiated in memory as Python objects. And you execute right there with, a, with no data transformation. This, this shows a little bit of the HPC software stack, the one that we are also using in this project, um, regarding the execution only. I'm focusing on execution, not, not on the whole workflow. So here at, at the programming model, we have PyComs in this case, and the PyComs has a storage API that certain um, softwares implement. Data Clay is one of them, and that's that's what I'll be talking about. So um, what does the active methods mean from the point of view of the developer? Uh, when we talk about the active methods, we are simply moving the function that you will have in your code here. Um, for example, this is a partial historian, just a bit of code that will have its path decorator and so on. You put that code in a class that has all the definitions that you need. In this, in this case, you have the persistent block object that will be a data clay object. You still have the task decorator. And there is an extra decorator that is the display method decorator that annotates the uh, fact that this object can be executed remotely in an active fashion. Just to discuss the performance improvements that we can see by using active. Here we have the weak scaling of a histogram. In blue, the comms execution, and in orange, the execution combining comms and data clay. Here we are, the code is the same. We are simply move, we have simply moved the code of the function into the object. So there are almost no data transfers. Um, we, we can see how the um, the, the performance in data clay is almost flat because it's a weak scaling. It's what we expect. So we have all, always the same time of execution. And um, for, for, for comps without data clay, we see a little bit of degradation. Um, as always, in case of doubt, you can blame GPCS. The problem in this, in this case is that the, because the data set is increasing the size, the caches are not enough. So in a single note, this will be the real improvement of the active, of the active method and um, um, not having to serialize data, not having to copy data from different memory spaces. And then when the data set increases, then you will have to transfer between nodes, the data will not be in the cache, all the data set does not fit in, in each cache, so you will you will have a performance degradation. So, <clears throat> okay, seems good. Is always a solution? No, it depends. There are situations in which it is, it is a real improvement, like, like we have seen. If you, your task is very memory intensive, such as the histogram that I showed, then yes, having data locality with our solution or with any mechanism that avoids you data transfers, it will yield benefits. However, if you have tasks that are heavily compute bound and the data is small or your compute is so high that you don't care about the time you 
you have deserializing or transferring it, then it won't matter. Um, said, I mean, if 90% of your time is doing compute and the transfers is less than 10%, then you will not achieve improve, uh, an improvement by adding locality in your code. So that's something to keep in mind. It's not a silver wallet, but when it works, it can work very well. Up, up until here, I have introduced a little bit of the locality and data clay and the advantages that we think that it provides to the programming model. Now I want to go into details on the split, the thing that I, I want to highlight and the new thing that we have been developing lately. So I'll start with a little bit of fundamentals, a very simple execution with, with comps would be like that. We have a data set that we have generated or we have staged in from another step. Um, it's not really relevant, but when you are ready to execute, you will have this data set distributed into several nodes, the nodes that you will be executing in it. And then you will run the PyCom tasks and that and that will run the scheduler and the and the runtime will execute the tasks and in this in this example synthetic example we have a process block task that will be um, taking a block and running the task on it of course real applications can be more complex but this is the main idea of having a data set that is distributed in blocks and running the application our, our proposal in, or the, the split idea is to, instead of having a task for each block, um, grouping them into several or into a partition, but what in this slide I show as a partition, and the task, instead of having a single block, has a partition. All the blocks in a, in a partition will be in the same node. So you are exploiting locality, and that is something that Data Clay, because he's doing the data management, knows the locality of all the objects and can provide this partition for the task. And the task will be, we have a partition in which all the blocks are local. So we have effectively ensured the locality of this task, something that with an active method we already have, but now we have less tasks. So the, the, those, this means less overhead of scheduling less invocation of tasks and it can be an improvement for an application with a with a data set that is heavily fragmented yeah that's just like that there's <laughs> the thing that i just explained um did i miss something ah yes also i, I was talking about the locality of the blocks but we also have the return and maybe a reduction operation and so on so by doing the computation on a whole partition, you can do the reduction at that step. So you are avoiding more data transfers if you have to reduce your data. For example, the Instagram application, you do the partial histogram on each block of data, and then you add all the bins. So that step, if you have a partition, you will do that, that, that reduction in the single application. Of course, you will need a reduction task, but you will not have to transfer all that data. So that also means less task invocations and less data transfers. So this can snowball into a lot of reduction of the number of tasks and the number of transfers. Here, um, I show some results of a K-means application that is a little bit more complex than an Instagram, and it's an application that, that is an iterative one. Um, we can see comps and comps data clay, blue and orange. The improvements that we have is because data clay is exploiting data locality and there are no transfers and all the data is always in the same place. And in green, we can see what happens when we add the, the split. We have a very flat execution times. This is a bit of a degenerate scenario where the data is heavily fragmented. We have 48 blocks per core. So that, that, that is a lot of fragmentation on the, on, on the input data set. But sometimes you may have this data that comes from a previous step and you have already that data fragmented. So having to invest efforts in 
rechunking all your data because you want to improve performance, sometimes it's it's a hassle or it doesn't or or, or it's very expensive because you need a lot of data copies. Here I'm telling you that with the split you don't need to rechunk your data. You only need to redo the way that you do the iteration. And that is what split provides. It doesn't always work. Um, if you have the, your blocks that are very big and you only have one task, then you will not achieve anything by improving the iteration. So this is the case that you are running data query with a split, but the data is already, you have already one task per block. There is no iteration that it, it's already perfectly, the, the block is perfectly fixed so that you have no overhead and the, you have the minimal tasks to exploit all the parallelism in your computing environment. Then no surprises here. You have good performance with, with the active because you, you are not serializing data, but adding a split only adds overhead. <clears throat> so yeah, if you know that your block size is perfect, then you don't need to split. But, sorry, it's, oh ah, yeah. So, um, and you don't need to split. But if you don't know your computer environment, or you know that you have data fragmented, or you are adapting what's your bottleneck, then split can have a big impact, a big impact in your application performance. The split not only can provide improve, uh, performance improvement because the scheduler overheads and the transfers, and we can we have detected some cases in which you can have an algorithmic improvement in your application. Here I will present a very illustrative case that is the Canidas neighbor, a clustering algorithm. In this algorithm, the, the fit procedure of the application um, generates a series of trees. And here we have the example that you're running with comps and you're generating a tree for each task on the fit uh, stage of the algorithm. Uh, the size of those trees depends on the size of your blocks. So that is fixed and, it's, and it depends on the granularity. With the split, you have bigger trees. That has an impact on the complexity of the algorithm because the lookup time on tree is log n. And if you have small trees, it's, it's slower to have a lot of small trees and do lookups on them. It's, it's slower than having a big tree and doing lookup on a bigger tree. So you are, you may be sacrificing parallelism, but you can, with a split, you can fine tune the number of trees that you generate without having to link the date, the size of the trees with the, with your block size. So that would, that is something that is changing your intermediate data structures that has an impact on the complexity at, at the algorithmic level. Um, and here, um, some results that we had with this, with this approach on the split. This, um, I'm comparing what green, um, orange should be green, is with split. I'm, all, I'm only comparing comps with the execution with comps that declare and split. Um, here, we can see that the, Split execution has an improvement on the left, is, that is a weak scaling. And on the right, there is a, um, it's the ratio of speed up when the train, training data set increases. We can see that COMS is having a flat ratio that this indicates a linear growth of, of speed up, a constant, a constant that is a, a linear time of execution. And if we use the split, we see that we are having a better than linear speed up. That is because we are closer to the optimal log n behavior that we would expect with trees. Something that we cannot achieve if we are having lots of trees, because at the end of the day, if we have a lot of trees, it's linear because we are having a linear complexity with a number of blocks. So very very quick conclusions. Um, when in doubt, use a split, of course. 
it's it's perfect for all. No, just kidding. But it can give you good improvements to have this kind of enhanced iteration mechanisms and to improve the the, the way that you are iterating your data. Um, because it also also affects the reduction. Even for compute bound applications, you may see improvement on your on your execution because even if you're compute bound, the reduction and the number of tasks will reduce. So you will reduce all those overheads. Um, this doesn't affect or this doesn't have a positive impact if your data and your block size is already optimal. So if you know your optimal block size for your computing environment and your application, then use it. That's not trivial to use, uh, to, to know. Maybe your data comes from a previous step and it's very highly fragmented. Maybe you cannot afford to rechange the data. Maybe you have a memory bound application and you don't have enough memory to have the blocks so big. So doing that may prove unfeasible. In those cases, then even if you know that, using split will be a good way to improve performance. And the, uh, the last application, the last example of the nearest neighbors show that using the split will change or can uh, allow you to change the intermediate data structures and that change can bring you benefits. In this case, we see how we were getting a, a near lock end performance on an application with um, compared to a more naive approach that will be closer to the to the end complexity execution time. However, doing that requires a little bit of algorithm knowledge. You need to know how your application works and how the intermediate data structures work before doing that. So that's my presentation. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Sample code. I think you didn't show anything. Uh, no, I didn't. I have it in a backup slide. I don't know how to open it. Everything that you put in the yeah, yeah, it's 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 hidden, but I don't know how to show ah. it. I well, I I can unhide it and show it, but. Uh, it's just, I think it's getting it. because it's good. But what we can do Okay, are you are you seeing in Zoom? Okay. Zoom What? Not everybody's in Zoom. Ah, ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, sorry. I don't know how to change the screen. Don't project this. Just stop project. Ah. Don't project. I don't know how to change the screen. It's it, it's a Windows thing. It's a PowerPoint thing. <laughs> no, the problem is that it's it, we are projecting another uh, screen. No, no, pero ah, no se puede cambiar. El bolso. Uy, te yo aprendí aquí. O sea, dos días. que están escritos. Sí, pero es que lo que volvemos es el proyecto. ¿Cómo se cambian las pantallas en Windows? Vale, pues el duplique. Ajá. Si no, 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 Okay, yeah. I think that they are in zone and they are here. 
Okay. Um, yeah. The 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 split a uh, split code example. Um, I, I had it, it in case somebody asked or I had time. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I knew that <laughs> Rosa was gonna ask. Um, in the left upper side, we we see the, the original code of an histogram, well, just uh, that we are iterating the blocks, running a partial histogram on each block, and then doing the reduction of all the blocks. Um, on the lower side, we see the split version. Um, in there, there is an extra loop. I, I mean, there's there's a nesting because uh, the split gives you partition, and the partition is a list of blocks. So you have to do this nested partition, but it's it's a trivial or it, it, it's a, a straightforward nested one. Um, you run the, your inner loop, your outer loop. You run the split. On your data set, but this gives you a list of partitions. And for each partition, you call a task. But it's in this case, I call it complete partition. And each complete partition runs the histogram of each block there. So you are doing you, you are you are doing the, the at the end of the at the end of the day, you're running the same number of partial histogram invocations, but now partial histogram is not the task the compute partition is a task. So the tasks are bigger because you're running a task per partition. And also you may want, uh, and in this case, uh, uh, yeah, and in this case I also included that the reduction is done at the partition level. So you will have less, less data to return because you are already, you are reducing your data for, for each task. And then you have the final reduction because of course, when you have it distributed, you at the end of the day, you need to reduce the data that you have executed in the, in your several nodes. Uh, then the experiment on the split version and the experiment on the original version is the same data structure. Uh, you, you, were, you were iterating on experiment blocks. Yeah. So also, you have these experiment blocks. Um, um, yeah. Well, this this code is assuming that you're using um, this paper right. Yes. That's your block and the split the is also the yes 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 the the when the split no re realizes that it's uh this leper right it's it's it's, 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 it's and then here the partition uh, you do uh, you iterate for fragments in partition what is a fragment in partition here uh, is is uh yes yes it's it's a block it's it's the same block that that i put here in the row in this kind of implicit also. It, it depends on the other structure. So this lipar rise, because it's the one that I have been using and testing, it's a bit implicit. Um, this is, those details are open to fine tune. I was to understand which code needs to provide or which code. Okay. It, it, it depends if we provide them at the, in this case, if this lip integrates the split or not. So mm, that that's open to discussion. The, 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 the idea of the split, the, the generic thing that I want to use here is the double nesting that it's required and it's and it's by design and how the partition work and it's flexible enough. The details on the specific data structures may vary depending on your data model and your and how is how is structured your your data? Because if if the experiment is multidimensional, then it's open to to interpretation how the split should work. Yeah, but your implementation is one split, no? Yes. So you will guess the data structure, or, or you? I mean, how you know which is the fragment in your partition? Is what I mean. For, for now, Not it works this loop in general. Uh, in general, um, if it's not a list and if it's not iterable, then the system refuses the temptation to guess. And are you speaking human? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I that's that, that's a Python. <laughs> um, um, a Python, if uh, no, it, it 
it, it, it complains, it raises an error that you are no, no, trying no, no, to split. Translate to your. Um, yeah. To your, your mother. Yeah. <laughs> I would say yeah. your mother would understand. What you are answering. And if, if it's in total list and the split doesn't know how to iterate it? No, but if, if it's iterable, what you say, but say the opposite. Don't, don't plan, ah. not try to answer the case that you cannot solve. Ah. Answer the case that you can solve. If ah, it's okay, a okay. list, what will do? Okay, if, then if if the split sees a list, then it looks at all the all elements in the list and they they are data clay objects. So they the split data clay knows the location and gives the partitions according to the placement. Sorry, I, I, I misunderstood mm. your question. Sorry. Yeah. There is a question in the chat. In data clay is like 42. Is there any chunking support based on observed randoms or data fragmentation? Sorry. This is like, uh, I guess. Is there any rechunking support based on observed runtimes or data fragmentation? We, uh, the the clay does not rechunk data if you don't ask, if you don't explicitly add code to rechunk it. So the the clay does no assumptions on the data on your data structure. So if you are using the Vislip array. For example, that is a library that done with with comes integration and so on. Then this lib has rechunking uh, support, right? Right. Okay. So you may use the rechunking features that the this lib that the data structures provide, but the data does no assumption. But what you are doing in the in the split is that you group the elements in blocks that are uh, in the same node. Yes. And you are not rechunking no, no, the no. whole structure of the, I don't know if, if this, this was what the... Ah, I... Okay. Um, here, the, in, 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 in the example that in Fundamental 2, um, I, I was showing that the partition has various blocks, but it's not rechunking. It's, it's the blocks are, are left as if, and the partition is a list of pointers, just to simplify. So data is not being moved at any at any point in this in the in the in this explanation. The data was moved or was restructured and so on. Um, we try to be local, and then and this means that a partition has all the blocks in that same node, and the pointers will be local. So the data will be in the same note. I hope this answered the question. Okay. Okay, thank you.